You are listening to The Cost of Doing Business on TLV1. We now go to Israel Corp, one of Israel's largest holding companies. Israel Corp reported a $406 million dollar loss in the fourth quarter today, thanks to huge losses at shipping subsidiary, subsidiary Tim. Now, where is Israel Corp headed? And can 2014 be better? With us is Gilad Alper, Senior Analyst at Excellence. Hi, Gilad. Hello. So what are we to make of the report, uh, you know, of the earnings report that uh, Israel Corp released today? I think we're seeing mostly the impacts of the financial bubble of 2008. I mean, it's, uh, what, five years after that or a bit more? Yeah. But still, it seems the shipping company is bleeding a lot of red ink because of the mistakes the, the uh, company made uh, six or seven years ago. Sure. Just well, as a reminder. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, you know, I wanted to ask you a reminder of which mistakes we are talking about. Yes, yeah, so basically um, Israel Corp went on a big, big expansion plan back in 2006-2007 with the aim of turning Tzim into one of the largest shipping companies in the world. Yeah. I think they wanted to turn them into one of the top 10, currently they're like top 20 or something. Yeah. And of course the problem is that they uh, initiated a very big plan and just uh, when the world was uh, yeah. getting ready to fall off a cliff. Yeah. And they paid a bunch of money to shipping yards in South Korea, especially, I think. And they got stuck with the bill, got stuck with, uh, with, you know, with ships that no one wants or no one needs. And, I mean, currently, in the beginning of 2014, the state of the shipping industry, I wouldn't call it maybe as bad as it was back in the beginning but of 2009. But it's still not fully recovered. But no, I mean, not even close to it. If you look at the dry, the dry Baltic index, the, the Baltic dry index, which is an uh, index of um, shipping rates, is basically almost as low as it was in the first quarter of 2009. So the shipping industry is doing very badly indeed. Yeah, trade And hasn't recovered in the level, at the level that we need to, you know, global trade. Exactly. So we have a big oversupply of, of freight, yeah. and Tim is suffering. Yeah. Plus, okay, so basically what you're saying is that the company still haven't, hasn't recovered from the mistakes it made in 2006, 2007, and this is the reason for this report. So, you know, looking into 2014, 2015, can it recover or will it take years until, you know, this loss is totally absorbed? Well, once the debt restructuring is complete... then it's very conceivable that Tim will be turned into a profitable company. Of course... Yes. We're talking, of course, about the huge uh, uh, debt settlement of Tim. Yeah, yeah. From huge, earlier yes. this year, yeah. Yeah, yeah, as in I think the uh, holding three, of... Uh, three billion uh, dollars, something like this. Uh, yeah, so uh, the holding of Israel Corp is supposed to drop, I think, from 99% to 32% or yeah. thereabouts. So a big, big uh, debt for equity swap. Uh, so um, assuming that that uh, debt restructuring is complete and assuming that's the last debt restructuring they need to do and assuming the shipping industry recovers to some degree, mm-hmm. then Tim can maybe start mm-hmm. uh, turning a profit. Sure. The, Only uh, the last one was a very big if. I mean, all the others are ifs, but the last one was a very big if. We don't know exactly what's going to happen in terms of recovery, uh, economic recovery uh, in 2014. Correct. So my, uh, my China next is, sentence yeah. was supposed to be that, in fact, my own belief is that in terms of the macroeconomy and global trade, the things will only get worse and worse. That's what I believe anyway. You actually see it already in some of the trade data, especially between China and the U.S. Exactly. China US is slowing down. The U.S. is slow to recover. Uh, well, yeah, I, 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 I would probably characterize it as China is slowing down a bit and the U.S. is doing even worse than it did a couple <laughs> of years ago. Uh, the import data from the U.S. are pointing to a decline in the purchasing power of the American consumer, and that's extremely negative for global trade. Also, if you look at some of the macro moves that China at least uh, per, um, uh, states that they want to do, which is basically rely less on export and more on internal consumption, mm-hmm. then that's going to erode global trade even more, yeah. actually much more. So the oversupply of, in the shipping industry is you know, likely to continue, and who knows, even, may, maybe even get worse. Yeah. So that's obviously bodes very badly for Tim. 
Plus, okay, so other than that, though, we have other, you know, uh, uh, Israel Corp has other subsidiaries that are uh, not doing so good. You know, first of all, you have Bazan, right? All your refineries. Correct. And you have uh, ICL, Israel Chemicals. Correct. And so. both of them haven't had an easy year, to, to say the least. Yeah, yeah. It's... Uh It's not a good year for Israel Corp from almost any angle. But uh, I, look, I, 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 would, I would probably characterize ORL as a bigger problem than ICL. ORL is suffering from, just like Tsim is suffering from oversupply in the shipping industry, ORL is suffering from an oversupply in the, in the um, uh, you know, oil di- um, distillers industry. Yeah. And just like the macroeconomy is going to continue to weigh on Tsim, One can expect that the global macro is going to continue to weigh on ORL. Yeah. So I'm not sure if they're going to recover that to any significant degree in the, you know, in the near future. If you look at ICL, things actually look a little bit better, a little bit better. The potash industry is maybe bottoming out. Maybe the cartel is coming back. Maybe oversupply in the potash industry is going to lessen over the next five years. So at least with ICL, there's something to expect. And we can, of course, also speak about ICL's investment in Ethiopia and whatever. Yeah. But, well, but what I you're th- saying is the silver lining, you know, ICL is also very questionable. Because as it seems, you know, this, uh, uh, the fate of Tsim is dependent on the global economy recovering. And the fate of oil refineries is, is dependent on the global economy, uh, uh, you know, recovering. Okay? Yeah. And ICL maybe has bottomed out, is what you're saying. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm trying to characterize it a, a little bit more positively, because if you look at the macro trends we discussed earlier, let's say China relying more on talent consumption rather than export, that obviously hits Tsim, but that's fantastic for ICL, because that means that meat consumption in China can go up quite significantly over the next 5-10 years, and that's great for, for demand for fertilizers. Yeah. So ICL can actually benefit from... From the overall market trends, at least the way I see them you know panning out yeah. over the next five ten years, so that 's a real sit of a lining sure plus Israel Corp also has a losing uh, joint venture uh, uh, you know a car right a car yeah, venture chorus exactly who also yeah. posted the loss yeah, of course, the loss there is kind of normal cost of business for oh, a company that 's really starting up, especially in the extremely competitive, unprofitable global car industry. Yeah. And look, the overall... But it also log- begs the question of why Israel Corp wanted to go into the losing car industry to begin with. <laughs> well, look, I, I, I can say this. At least it, it seems that many of the business ventures of Israel Corp are not going as well as one could have expected. Yeah. But what I would say for them is that they're trying. And that's actually saying a lot, because if you, for instance, compare... Israel Corp to, you know, IDB or, you know, specifically Idan Ofer to Nochi Dankner. Yeah, the other you know, the, big holding company and the other big tycoon or exactly. former tycoon, yeah. Look, if you look at IDB, what did they do exactly? They invested in buying some stock from a Swiss bank yeah. and they did some other stuff. Israel Corp is actually investing in new businesses. Yeah, in new you industries. You know, they're not so. doing very well. They could have done better. Uh, better, uh, better players did very badly, obviously, yeah. but they're trying, you know, they're actually taking the money and trying to invest in new businesses, creating new stuff. Yeah. And I think they deserve a good word for that. And I hope that course actually goes well, although the logic there is tough, because again, they're going into a tough industry. And uh, I hope they do well. Yeah, well, at least they have the moral high ground, uh, as opposed to IDB. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm, and, and, and I think that's important because Zidane Ofer is vilified on almost a weekly basis in Israel. But again, the big difference between him and Dunkner is that Zidane Ofer is developing new businesses. He's a real industrialist, and that's, and that's good. That's something that we want to see happening. You know, he could have taken his money from ICL and built a $200 million castle in France. Yeah. He didn't do that. He invested in, he invested in new businesses. Yeah, well... Hopefully one day those businesses will be a success as well. Thank you so much, uh, Gilad Alper, for joining us. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.